Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm um, continuing in our syllogism series, but this time we're going to be answering some of the viewers' questions. So this is some of the questions that you guys sent in specifically, um, and hopefully this will be helpful. Okay, so if you guys are new here and it's the first time checking out my channel, please do go and check out the other playlists on my channel, especially the syllogism one, where you'll be able to find other um, kind of earliest questions and, and earlier videos, especially the earlier Arrow Method videos, which detail a little bit more about exactly how to use them, whereas this video... Um, kind of builds upon those principles as well as on principles such as creating the hypothetical. So if you haven't already checked those videos out, I would highly recommend you to do so. Okay, so let's get straight into this then. So it says, most cats that can climb. Um, okay, so I'm going to put a question mark here because we don't know how many cats that can climb. But, but out of the ones that can climb, most of them are clever or agile. It says, zats are neither clever nor agile. So, cats that can climb are either clever or agile. Well, we're only told that most of them are clever or agile. Remember, this is where the creating the hypothetical comes in. So, we can create a hypothetical that says, cats that can climb are neither clever nor agile. So, in um, kind of in opposition to this original statement. And because that statement is true, our original statement must be false. If you guys are, are thinking and listening to what I've just said right there and thinking that it makes no sense, it's probably because you haven't watched that creating the hypothetical video, which if you've watched and then get back, get back to me, you'll be able to find, um, you'll be able to find this explanation a lot more understandable. So if that's a cat, they cannot climb. Well, that's a not clever or agile, but remember, right? A zat could be a cat that can climb because it could be, one of those few cats that cl can climb, but are neither clever or agile, okay? Um, so, therefore, I would say that this is also false, because if a zat is a cat, then they cannot climb. No, they could still climb, because it could be part of that few that are neither clever nor agile, um, because we know zats are neither clever nor agile. So, um, some zats um, are not cats. Well, the thing here is, we could say that all zats are cats, or it could be that all zats are not cats. There's just not enough info for this. So once again, this answer is no. Because the reason why you can't say that some are not cats is, by the, the word some in itself means 2 to 99. So if you're saying that some are not cats, that means you're saying that 1 to 98 of them are cats, at least. And that would be wrong, because we're not sure even if any of them are cats at all. Okay? So just something to have a think about, basically. Zats are either cats or they can climb. Well, what did we say just before? Okay, we said about um, zats can be cats and they could climb as well. And one of the things, if you guys have been following my videos for quite a while now, you'll, you'll know that I love seeing the word or because or is dead, dead easy to solve. Because if it says the word or, it means it can only be one or the other. Okay, so therefore, if it can be both, then the statement has to be immediately wrong. Or if it can be neither, then the statement has to be wrong. Because first of all, a zat could neither be a cat and it could also not be able to climb. So the statement's wrong. But the statement's also doubly wrong because a zat could be a cat and be able to climb. Okay, so that's another no. Okay, so some cats that can climb are not agile. Okay, so this one here, um, it says most cats are either clever or agile, which must mean that few cats are neither clever um, nor agile. So this is right to conclude, because few, um, few just means a specified amount less than 50. So I would say that this is going to be true. Okay? Um, so some cats that climb are not agile. Great. Okay? So, um, yeah, so you can see a couple of kind of dodgy questions in there, definitely. Uh, but I think it is very, very much doable from this kind of standpoint. Okay? So on to the next question. Okay, so on to the next question then. Okay, so let's have a look at this one. So, no underwater archaeological site can be excavated um, unless spe special equipment is used. So, for underwater archaeological site... Um, okay, so because the whole thing talks about um, underwater archaeological sites you don't actually have to use it but it says none can be excavated unless special equipment is used so if something is excavated specialist equipment must be used if it will not disturb protected species the site can be evacuated if it will not disturb protected species the site can be excavated so i would try and draw something that looks like this and so this is an idea that i sometimes frequently talk about which is that 
the main passage, the main thing mentioned in the passage and the premise doesn't necessarily have to populate our diagram. So here, underwater archaeological site, I'm not actually going to put in the diagram because I know that's what the whole question is talking about. And I know that you might think, oh, well, it's quite a big part. Yeah, but just because it's a couple of words doesn't mean it can't still be the main subject of the question. So if this said, for example, no pupil can get a grade nine unless they work 12 hours a day or whatever, like you can see, that's what I mean about the, the subject, that that's what the passage basically revolves around. That's the key idea here. OK, so um, if specialist equipment is not used, an underwater archaeological site cannot be excavated. Well, we know it says no underwater archaeological site can be excavated unless specialist equipment is used. So um, therefore, I guess in order to perhaps I, have to, I should have changed my diagram, it should appear with a must. So if it's excavated, it must um, require um, specialist um, equipment um, to be used. So if it's not used, an underwater, underwater archaeological site cannot be excavated. This is true because in order for it to be excavated, you must use specialist equipment. OK, so this is therefore true. Some underwater archaeological sites can be excavated without disturbing protected species on the seafloor. So by saying that some can be excavated without disturbing protected species, remember, same kind of idea as last time. Some is 2 to 99. That means you're saying 1 to 99 can be excavated, but with still disturbing, which is wrong because you know that um, only by not disturbing protected species can the site be excavated. So this second statement is wrong. If specialist equipment is not used, investigation of an underwater archaeological site will disturb protected species on the seafloor. OK, so if it's not using sp specialist equipment, it's not excavating. OK, um, because, you know, in order to excavate, you must use. And it says investigation of an underwater archaeological site will protect, will disturb protected species. So this is one of those where I kind of disagree with the Medify answers. I'll be completely honest. So they put yes here um, because I think the line that they want to take it down is, you know, specialist equipment is not used, so it's not excavated. But it never tells us that um, if an investigation is... Uh, um, just because something is not excavated doesn't mean that it definitely disturbs protected species. Like, there might be other variables at play as well. Do you know what I mean? So that's why I would personally put no, right? Um, but the answer to this one was yes. Um, and maybe one of you guys can perhaps enlighten um, why... Um, maybe one of you guys can enlighten perhaps why the answer to this one is yes. Um, but I personally believe it's no, so I would go with no. And and one of the things that I do mention is that sometimes the Medify answers are dodgy, right? You know, they have over 300 sets in there. It's only natural that they're going to at least get some of these questions and answers wrong. Okay, so um, that's just what I personally believe. You guys can let me know if you feel different. Okay, so great. On to the next question then. Okay, so um, all flags were either red green or blue okay so or or there are more red flags than green flags but only half as many as blue flags so more red than green so let's say red is x green is going to be less than x but only half as many as blue so therefore red so then blue must be 2x right so more red than green but only half as many as blue so all the red flags had green crosses the green flags had uh, blue crosses so Okay, yeah, actually, I'm not going to do it like that. I was trying to align the colours up, um, but let's just do it as it is. Um, or maybe it is a good idea. Actually, yeah, maybe that is a good idea. So I can go all the green flags, all the red flags had green crosses, all the green flags had blue crosses, and all of the blue flags had green crosses, except for a few that had red. So that means most had green, and then therefore a few had red crosses actually perhaps i shouldn't have overlapped it um yeah i think i made my own life difficult here because i can't really draw the arrow from the blue flag to the red cross because i don't want to go over too much stuff basically in the middle so um let's have a go at this so there were more green crosses um than blue crosses on the flags um i would argue that this is true OK, um, because x is green cross and most of 2x is green cross whereas blue cross is just less than x there are more blue flags with green crosses, okay, which is most than green flags with blue crosses. I would say that this is true again, because blue flags with green crosses is most of the 2x, which has to be at least greater than x, is x or greater than x or greater than 
I know it's not greater than or equal to, it has to be greater than x because it's at 51 to 99 of that 2x, which is going to be 51 to 99% of that 2x, which is going to be at least x. There are more blue crosses um, than red flags. Blue crosses than red flags with green crosses. That's wrong because blue crosses is just um, less than x and red flags um, with green crosses is x. So that's wrong. There are more red crosses than green flags. Uh, we don't know. So because basically here, the amount of green flags is less than x and the amount of red crosses is a few of 2x, which could literally be like 0.01x or it could be 0.99x. The point is we're not necessarily too sure here and, and that's what makes things difficult. There are more red flags than um, blue flags with red crosses blue flags with red crosses so i would say that this has to be true um this last one because red flags with oh no that's yeah no that's true because the amount of red flags is x and blue flags with red crosses is few in re in regards to 2x and few is less than 50 so it's going to be less than x so it's basically saying there is more x than there is less than x um, so this statement has to be true. So that's what I would put for this question. Okay, so I think once again, it is can be tricky. I think especially if you can kind of try to kind of navigate your way into kind of getting used to this kind of idea and plotting um, the points and the, the things, um, the errors, and somewhat appropriately, it can make your life easier. I definitely think I made my life harder. I'll be completely honest. Um, I was just trying something new. Um, I definitely made my life harder by trying to create these overlapping arrows. I thought it'd be easier to see things if they're all on the same plane, but then I messed up with the red anyways. So um, yeah, okay. so yeah, don't worry about it too much, basically. Um, as long as you, and this is why practice is important, right? So one of the things I say in practice is try out new things. This is your training routine. This is your training ground. Try out doing questions in new ways, in fun ways, in inventive ways. Okay, awesome. So um, yeah, let's keep going then in that case. Okay, so the last question to go through here. So someone um, just sent in this just particular question because they had a little bit of a query about it. So let's have a look at this. So not all architectural designs influenced by historical context. So we don't know how many are influenced by historical context, but it says not all of these are popular today. So it says some of the architectural designs that are... So you can see here... Um, yeah, architectural designs is, prob is the kind of what everything is talking about here. Okay, so I mean... Yeah. Um, okay. So because architectural designs is everything that's being mentioned here, it's the main subject, I'm going to get rid of that architectural design bit and I'm just going to bear that in mind. So the architectural designs are influenced by historical context, not all of them popular today. Some of them that are popular today are environmentally sustainable. So some are environmentally sustainable. All environmentally sustainable architectural designs, all of these incorporate eco-friendly materials. So not all environmentally sustainable architectural designs are influenced by historical context okay um so yeah okay so with regard to this question it says not all of those environmental sustainable architectural designs are influenced by historical context so the person here put no and i agree with them i do think the answer is no because the reason could be that yes not all of the um architectural designs influenced by historical context are popular today let's say that there is just one Okay, and it says some of the designs that are popular today are environmentally sustainable. So it could be that the um, po the architectural designs that are popular today, the ones that are environmentally sustainable, are not this one, right? They're not the one that was um, influenced by historical context. They could be just some other ones. And so therefore, it would be wrong to say that not all of them are influenced by historical context because it could be that none of them are. Because if you say not all of them are influenced by historical context and not all is 1 to 99, you're saying that there is at least... Yeah, one that is influenced by historical context, which we can see here would be right. Okay, so yeah, I agree with this person. And once again, so this is a question from Medify. Um, and you can see it definitely has its weaknesses. And this is what I was saying about how sometimes questions just aren't right. 
okay? Um, and it, it unfortunately is a reality that happens, but it's important as long as you guys can keep your wits about you and you can understand the basis behind these questions and where they're approaching them from, you'll be absolutely fine. So very well done to the viewer who sent this one in. Um, yeah, really, really happy with this. And um, yeah, so that pretty much covers um, the end of this video. Um, I hope you guys found it useful. Um, please do let me know what you'd like to see next. I know that there's been a lot of talk about the VR and walkthroughs and, and stuff like that. And I'll do my best to see if I can carve out some time in order to get that over to you guys. But otherwise, um, take care, guys, and I'll see you all in the next video.